Hi guys, Darkow here. Today we are going to look at how to create diamonds in Blender. More specifically though, the most common diamond cuts that are used in real life. All the decagonal, princess cut, emerald cuts, cushion cuts, the crushed ice look and all that jazz. Before we get started though, this tutorial is aimed at beginners but not first day Blender users. I also use some free quality of life add-ons in this tutorial. If you want to know what they are, I have created a separate tutorial for that, which will show up in the cards right now. While these are absolutely not necessary, I can assure you, the add-ons will make your Blender life in general and not just this tutorial much easier and more enjoyable. So let's get started. We will start with the cylinder, make it have 10 sides, cause you know, Decagonal diamond, the most common one, that is the one we are starting with. If you have trouble with the keys I'm pressing and the shortcuts I'm using, they're neatly displayed right here. We'll go into edit mode and add four loop cuts with Control R. We'll select the middle ring by going into face selection mode by pressing 3 and all clicking an edge, which will select the whole loop and we'll subdivide these faces and dissolve the extra loop cut that produces. Now we have to select more face loops on the top and bottom, but if you try it now, Blender gets confused because of the n-gons we just created. So what we're gonna do is go into orthographic view and turn on x-ray mode by pressing Alt-Z so we can select the faces behind the cylinder as well as in front of it. Then hit space, which brings up the search bar, and type in triangulate and triangulate the faces, which will create these neat looking triangles. Now select only the edges on the face loop with Control all left click while in edge selection mode and check or deselect them. Make sure it's the edges connecting the triangles on the top and bottom or you'll end up creating a dog collar instead of a diamond. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> Switch to top view and scale the edges and puff them out a little. Triangulate the top face loop as well. Now select the top face and rotate it on the z-axis by 18 degrees. Or well, minus 18 degrees, depending on which way you're looking at it. 18 degrees specifically because we have 10 sides and 360 by 10 is 36, but we only want to move them halfway so they form matching triangles instead of rectangles. Now we have made a nice looking antique drum. We don't want that, but with the magic, also known as selecting the edges in x-ray mode and resizing them, moving them around on z-axis, we'll squish the drum into the shape of a diamond. You can also find some diamond blueprints online and follow them to create a degree accurate diamond, but I am lazy so I'm just eyeballing it here and it still looks good. And voila, we have finished a decagon diamond. I do end up tweaking it a bit more later and you should too until you're satisfied with the shape. Definitely do work in x-ray mode though or you'll end up like me here where I change the shape but only for the front part. Imagine if diamonds were melty like this. Now that the modeling is finished, it's time to create the material for the diamond. I have set up a simple HDRI light and the links to the HDRI I'm using here will be in the description below. We'll start with the glass BSDF shader with the index of refraction set to 2.4 because that's the real index of refraction of a real diamond. Now we can achieve the same results with the principal BSDF shader too, but it's just wasteful and makes our shader harder to control because we are not using 80% of what principal BSDF has to offer. So glass BSDF just works fine. And as you can see, just setting the IOR to the correct value, we have somewhat of a diamond looking material already, but we are not quite there yet. So now we'll duplicate the glass BSDF three more times, then set the color of these new shaders, one to pure red, one to pure green and one to pure blue. 
We are doing this to create the multicolor refraction that happens in real diamonds because when light is refracted through a prism, and in our case the diamond does act like one, it tends to split the light into all the colors of a rainbow. Now you might be wondering then why three colors instead of seven? Well, because I tried it with seven colors and it made the shader mega complicated while giving you the exact same results because the red, green and blue in the three shader setup mixes to create the other colors as well. And on the seven color setup, if even one of your color is a little bit off, your diamond will have an unwanted color tint, which we do not want. Well, having three of these, we can make them perfect red, perfect green, and perfect blue, and it works just fine. So now, we will add the colored shaders together using Add Shaders node. Then we'll mix the pure white shader with the multi shader we just created using a mixed shader node. Make sure though the white one is plugged into the top shader in the mix node. If you plug in the shader now, you'll notice that there's no difference at all because we need to do a bit of math now. Add a value node, rename it to IOR. Add another value node and rename it to dispersion or something like IOR addition like I did for my simple brain. We'll plug both into a math node. Make sure it's set to add since we are only going to be doing addition. Now we'll change the IOR to 2.415 for obvious reasons. Plug it into the white shader too, so we can control all the IORs from this single node. And for the dispersion, I will make it 0.1 for now, which is way too much, but it will help visualize the shader for now. We'll plug in the first addition to the red shader, which will make the red show up on the diamond. Duplicate the add node and plug the output from the first one to this and again add more dispersion value to it Which will now go into the green shader now We can see both the red and green and the colors in the middle because they kind of mix out We will repeat the same process for the blue one as well And I think you get the point by now now you might notice two key things First the dispersion is too strong as I stated before point one is too strong and second, the diamond kind of has started to look a bit muddy. That is because the dispersion is being applied to all the rays like diffusion rays, reflection rays, transmission rays, and all the others. But we only want it on the transmission ray. So to fix this, first, we're going to reduce the dispersion to something like 0 0.01. This node essentially lets us control the intensity of the effect. You should tweak this to your liking and then add a light path node and plug in the transmission ray into the factor of the mix shader so the effect only applies to transmission rays. And look at that! How close to a real diamond our digital one looks. We can tweak the color of the diamond by changing the color of the main white shader we have. In my opinion, only light shades of color work because otherwise it just looks like a artificially acrylic colored diamond or something. I then duplicated the materials for the different diamonds and changed the color individually so they have different colors. And then I changed the HDRI to something better because the previous one was reflecting off the diamond too much. Changing the floor to black also does give a good contrast between the reflected, reflected, yes, refracted light and the dark spots in the diamond. And our diamond shader is almost complete. Not quite though. <laughs> because you might notice that our digital diamonds don't quite have the brilliance matching that of real diamonds. But we can fake it. Add another mix shade in order because we are going to mix in yet another shader. Add a emission shader. And since we want the emission shader to be the same color as our main shader, add a hue saturation node which we will plug it into both the emission and glass BSDF. Whatever color you make, the hue saturation node will now change both the glass and the emission. Blood diamond kind of looks nice here, not gonna lie. <laughs> I 
View the emission shader by control shift clicking the node. You need node wrangler add-on enabled for this to work. Add a Fresnel node and view it. Fresnel is basically the property which makes most real material become more reflective than they actually are when viewed from a sharp angle. In our diamond this will help us isolate the surfaces which we are basically looking at a sharp angle. Tweak the Fresnel value until most of the diamond is black. Usually 1.02 or 1.03 works the best. We just need a tiny bit of emissions in the sides of the diamond. Plug the emission shader into the mix shader and add the Fresnel as the factor so the emission only shows up where Fresnel is. This effect is very subtle but if you compare with the mix shader turned on and off you can see the emission does help make the diamond appear more brilliant. You can switch a node on and off by hovering over it and pressing M. I didn't know about this for the longest of time and it blew my mind. <laughs> this is so helpful. Just you can just switch off a node. <laughs> and with that part one of our diamond tutorial is done. We have basically created a diamond in Blender. Next time we'll have a look at how to make the different cuts of diamonds as I mentioned earlier and what are the differences. There are tons of look for diamonds like the crushed ice look, chunky brilliance look, small speckles, large speckles, darker diamond while the princess cut diamond is darker and all that. I watch real jewelry videos for almost two weeks now and I never knew diamonds are so specific and different. I get why real diamonds are so expensive now. But buy artificially made diamonds. Real diamonds are a bit too expensive for what they are. Don't don't go into bankruptcy for a diamond. <laughs>